Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're gonna invert the SVG elements. You'll notice that here our bar chart's upside down, which is irregular for most people in their bar charts, so we're gonna learn to flip them upside down. Uh, you may have noticed that they looked like it's upside down or inverted. This is because SVG uses XY coordinates. In SVG, the origin point for the coordinates is the upper left corner, and X coordinate of zero places the shape on the left edge of the SVG area. A Y coordinate of zero places a shape on the top edge of the SVG area. Higher X values push the rectangle to the right. Higher Y values push the rectangle down. To make the bars right side up, you need to change the way the Y coordinate is calculated. It needs to account for both the height of the bar and the total height of the SVG area. The height of the SVG area is 100. If you have a data point of zero in this set, you would want the bar to start at the bottom of the SVG area, not the top. To do this, the Y coordinate needs to needs a value of 100. If the data point value were one, you would, would start the Y coordinate of 100 to set the bar at the bottom. Then you need to account for the height of the bar of one. So your final Y coordinate would be 99, so 100 minus one. The Y coordinate, that is Y is equal to height of SVG minus the height of bar, would place the bars right side up. So we wanna change the callback function for the Y element. So down here, you can see, I'm gonna stretch this out so we have it all in one line. Um, you've got your Y element. Uh, remember the height of the bar is three times the, the data value of D. So in general, the relationship is Y is equal to the height minus the M. Height minus the M, what's M? M is supposed to probably be the height, the, the width of the whole um, SVG area times D, where M is the, con is the constant that scales the data points. Oh, okay, got it. Um, so do we have an M described here? No. So change the callback function for Y. And so what we want to do is return here, right? Um, oh man, that's frustrating. Uh, return, remember, and we want to return a y well let's see here we want a console.log if we've got d and i in here we can see we're passing in these elements um, x is already set to be, have them stretched out and so what we want to do is make y equal to the height of our svg so we know our height is set here in the h element so yeah if we were to add the height in here is there so we could let's say we can return um, the height of the SVG, H, minus the height of the bar. And that's our data point, right? So D. Oops. And so that flips it around. So we're returning H minus D. And if we look at it here, we'll see it's 88. So our height is 100 and our thing is 12. So we want to have it be... Um, 88. So we're making an 88 is, uh, I guess, the space that it's not inhabiting. And uh, that's how we invert the shape. Uh, so we can get rid of the console log. And, um, you know, if we were to write this, they're already writing it default in J e, uh, Java ES6, but we could do it in old vanilla JavaScript just like this, and it would work perfectly fine. Return H minus D. Hmm. Sixty-four. Hmm. We had it right. H minus D. Eighty-eight. Sixty-nine. The first rectangle should have a Y value of sixty-four, and it's at eighty-eight. So maybe I. Well, where where are we extending it? Okay, yeah. The D. Um, is equal to D times three. So we want to go three times D. Uh, D times three. And that gets us 64, 7, 34. And uh, we need to actually do it in here in order to get it to function here. Um, because of the order of operations, this works just like this. We don't actually need that in here. Um, but I would oftentimes just do this because I like to explicitly do that. Um, so anyways, in here we're getting our answers. So I'm pretty sure this one will pass now. Um, and so let's get rid of this console log. And here we have it in vanilla JavaScript. 
and we're chaining it to the next ATTR so we don't put a semicolon here. So we're setting our Y value equal to D times three um, minus H or H minus D times three. And so if we wanted to make this an ES6 function, we could just make it like this. Uh, this would pass the test as well. So now it's ES6, we can make it in a single line so that it would have, I think, implicit returns. Yeah, with implicit returns, you don't want to add the blocks in there. So we ran the tests. Yeah, it works like this as well. And so, you know, we actually don't need this because JavaScript does this automatically. Um, so this would be kind of the simplest, easiest way to write this. Um, cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you in the next lesson.